Well, hello, everyone. And welcome to this summer fun series of The Better Satellite World, a podcast of Space and Satellite Professionals International. I'm Lou Zaccarella. Well, it is summer in many parts of the world, and we've started to interrupt the private lives of our Hall of Fame members and important people to find out what they're doing for fun this summer. Now, last week, we spoke with a woman who had just received her MBE from Queen Elizabeth for her work, for our industry and for the nuclear industry. Today, we're going to find out what the woman who has more to do with the development of GPS and its success is up to. And um, even without GPS, we managed to find her. This series and our Better Satellite World podcasts are supported by our corporate patron members. And I wanna shout them out. Echo Star Hughes, Northrop Grumman, Access Intelligence, and the law firm of Ken L. Gates. The SSPI podcasts are also supported by the 3,000 members of Space and Satellite Professionals International and our chapters around the globe. Thank you, SSPI. Gladys West, no doubt the most famous person to ever come out of Dinwiddie County, made history <laughs> by helping to develop the global positioning system. Uh, when the movie Hidden Figures came out, the spotlight went on this extraordinary mathematician who literally changed the world and whose model is the most accurate ever made of the shape of the place we call home. Now the US Air Force inducted her into its Hall of Fame in 2018, but this year she really got the big prize. She was inducted into the Space and Satellite Industries Hall of Fame. I joke about that, but it shows you her influence on both government and the commercial side of our industry. You've seen her interviewed in many places about her life and work, but today we're gonna to ask her and her daughter, Carolyn, what's going on this summer? Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's great to see you. And uh, Dr. West, I appreciate you all moving to the front of the house to talk to me today. <laughs> I know you don't do it this early. Um, You're welcome. And it's, and it's great to see you. And, and you, you both look so lovely and fresh in the morning. Um, first question I have for you, uh, Dr. West, do you want to go surfing with me out at Montauk in Long Island? Do you have a, a surfboard? Well, well, I can get ready to go. <laughs> OK. Well, I figured out you could maybe figure out the coordinates between the wave and the board. We could get a good ride and not, not crash. So, all right. So we'll, we'll pack you up, Carolyn. You know, you, you have to bring your board too. Okay, I'll be there. All right. Well, you know, my question though is is really, you are noted as one of the hardest working people in, in the history mm -hmm. of the industry, and I know. You said in an interview um, that your mom identified you as someone special you know, yes. very special characteristics. But you also said you didn't have a lot of fun as a kid. You, you, you were yeah. kind of working. You didn't do what the, the normal kids do. Now, I have to ask you, you know, you're it. You're in the Hall of Fame. You're like a big star. What do you do for fun now, this summer? <laughs> well, uh, uh, fun, is, fun is different at this state of my life, you know. Uh, at an earlier state, I was more serious. And I had to sort of go for it and, you know, set up for my life and however I was going to survive and, and, yep. and be successful. I mean, I had a whole lot of responsibility, but now I feel like that I've just about made it. And, and so I should look for uh, all the good things and, yes. and to enjoy what I have. And, and I'm really having a good time, even though I may tell you that uh, I get tired or something. But uh, one thing I plan to do this summer is just sort of touch base with a lot of the people and friends and all who have supported me uh, in my, on my journey. And I started uh, a few weeks ago and last week I had, uh, or this week, I guess I had, I called two people that I knew, just, I didn't even have the telephone numbers. I had to go look them up and find them and, and this kind of thing. And, uh, and, and I was so, 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 so surprised when one says how much she enjoyed my book, oh, <laughs> you know, so, so that lifted me up too. So I'm getting a lot from calling and talking. To <laughs> right. And, um, it, uh, what you, yes. And I would agree. You've just about made it. Um, no question <laughs> about that. Uh, so Carolyn, she's, she's going to be, you know, visiting friends. Um, how about you, actually? What are you doing? 
Well, I'm going to take the summer to kind of just recharge. It's been a busy year uh, promoting her book and she's had a lot of appearances and she's taken a break now. So I am going to find other ways to promote it without, you know, taking her out to give her time to rest and just recharge, refuel and enjoy family. Yeah. Re-energize. By the way, just so for our readers uh, edification, we'll put this up. What's the name of the book? Title of the book? It, it began with a dream. It began with a dream, yep. Which is, of course, Gladys because, West and Marvin Jackson. Right. And of course, that was what you said when you gave your acceptance speech into the Hall of Fame. It began with a dream. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, that's very good. And boy, it certainly did. You know, I have to ask you, when, you, when you're going, having fun this summer, promoting your book um, and calling your friends, do you ever go back to Sutherland, Virginia on holidays to visit and look around and touch base? Yeah, yes, we do. We were going back regularly until the pandemic came. Mm. And we would stay for uh, a few days at a time. We, we have a little house down there um, do. that's all, all finished up redone. My parents used to live in it and redone. And so it's it's nice and, and pleasant just to come down there and, and lie out and have a lady that come to clean up and, and do that kind of thing. So we enjoy the little house down in Sutherland. We don't visit many people when we go down there. We just get down there and rest, <laughs> you know, lie out yeah. and go out to eat and and uh, talk to people. And, and, you know, what's it what's it feel like to be back in Sutherland. I mean, I grew up in a small town too. I live in New York. And when I go back, I have all, all kinds of memories. What What is the most striking feeling you have when you go back to your hometown now, coming back as a, a conquering hero? Yeah, I, I get, yes, I, I guess uh, it, 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 it is, is this wonderful, sometimes we have a lady who helps to clean. So sometimes we have to take her home after she finishes. And it just uh, a, a strange, wonderful feeling to go down the same highway. And I saw that highway very different when I was little. Uh, mm -hmm. But now, uh, you know, the farms are gone. Uh, people have beautiful homes built along the road. And, and uh, just seeing how they have materialized uh, in terms of um, keeping their surroundings and everything taken care of. Uh, yeah. they're, um, they're interested in more than just themselves. And apparently they are progressing uh, as far as saving uh, what the community needs. Uh, and that is a lot, a lot of being interested in the people. Yeah. Uh, I, I, met, I met an older man that I knew when I was a little girl. Uh, maybe a few months ago uh, down there and just wonderful to sit and talk about the past and about how things used to be and you know and comparing them with now and, and there's a lot, whole lot that's still in the heart or in the mind that you, you can't really express clear, clear enough for somebody else to right. be there with you. Right, it's, it's right in your soul. Um, Carolyn, what, what's, what's your impression uh, for yourself when you look at your mom back in her hometown? I assume you accompany her. I do. Um, do they, do actually... they lift her up? they put her in a chariot when she comes in? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's nice. It is, we gather there every year for um, all of our family gathers, mm -hmm. my cousins. And um, so it's nice. We get there and we're talking about things. Uh, mom's home church is still there so we go there uh, and you know most of the people are her relatives but we do talk to them some of them are express how grateful they are for everything she did how proud they are but mostly it's just family just getting back together and just enjoying it so. yeah it's beautiful you know Gladys uh, Dr. West as you're speaking um, I'm reminded of the things that GPS has done to help restore agriculture in parts of the world. You know, we, we go around, obviously, and look to see what's going on in terms of economic development, what satellites can do for people. And um, the use of GPS has really transformed farming. And it has, yes. allowed, it has allowed families to stay together 
where the younger yes. people now can take over the farm and use the technology that you brought into the world. And I'm yes. talking about places like not just the United States and the West here, but in mm -hmm. India and places like that, it's, it's really mm -hmm. been transformative for managing water supplies and soil usage. So uh, it's, it's, it's been, you know, something that you probably weren't thinking of a long time ago, but it has been something that um, you contributed to mightily. You know, I have to ask you, um, someone once asked um, Frank Sinatra um, what music he listened to when he was on a date, because everybody used to listen to his music, right? <laughs> I have to ask you, do you, I understand you don't actually use GPS that much. You prefer a paper map. Is that true? <laughs> Well, I, I, I can say that was true earlier, and I'm getting more used to <laughs> GPS <Right>. now. <laughs> but but I, I always enjoyed just looking at a paper map yeah. because I could see everything laid out because I like the things to be organized and and uh, logical and all, and I can see that with the paper map. And so I enjoy, if for example, we, we have a little farm that we're going to, and we don't own it, but a farm we were going to go to see. Well, to me, the fun part was to get get the old map. <laughs> right. So I got, I got a map and I, you know, mapped out all the roads to get going, what you see and all that. And that part to me is enjoyment. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Was it a decent map that it actually get, it wasn't as good as GPS, right? But got you. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no we, we also do GPS, but we, we, we do that more. <laughs> if yeah, I'm right. driving and I use GPS, they're in the back seat with the map. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? You're using yes. GPS and they're back there reading yes. the old map. Yes. I love that. <laughs> I love that image. But, you know, I, I saw you did, I think it was on Black Excellus, there was a, a program on you, the 10 things you didn't know about Dr. Gladys West. Um, and you, you were referring to that <laughs> using the paper map. I think that's where I saw it. But you said something that was beautiful. You said, I trust my brain. <laughs> Um, I have to ask you, what did you mean by that? Is there something about the human brain that you find, based on your work with mathematics, so elegant that it can really never be replaced? Or is there something deeper than that? I, 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 I guess I didn't mean to be conceited or anything, but um, you have a tendency to know, know that you know and know when you know. <laughs> right, right, and and know that it's true, and and you worry about somebody else because you didn't prove it yourself or check it out yourself, and uh, just always wanting to get things right. I think make you do that kind of thinking, uh, not trusting others as much as you trust yourself. Yeah, you're trusting your own instincts. Um, yeah, Caroline, I've got two quick questions. I'm going to ask you one of them. Um, what was the most fun you remember your mom having? <laughs> Growing up? Yeah, in the summer. Um, I think family vacations. We used yeah. to take a family vacation um, with her sister and her family. And um, my grandmother used to go. I think she relaxed more then. Probably. That's probably the most fun. <laughs> I mean, you know, obviously she's such a hardworking person, right? It's, it's, she is. it was really a time when she, she just chilled, but then, but then got back to work. Um, Dr. West, last question. It's a, it's been a quick one. What's your favorite song? What's my favorite song? Oh man. I have so many of them. Help me out, girl. Yeah. I can ask you to sing it. I just want to know what it is. That's it. He said he just wants to know the name of it. Oh, so. uh, uh, I, I, I would say how great they are. By art. How great they are? Yeah, how great like thou art. art. Oh, great, of course. Yeah. You know, I, I have so many more questions to ask you um, about that subject. Maybe we can do this another time. Um, <laughs> but, I, you know, I've got to let you go. Um, because I know you want to get back to the house and, and relax a little bit. But, um, you know, I, I mean this sincerely. I, I do a lot of these. Um, we talk to obviously all kinds of uh, famous people, your peers in the industry who have done great things. I, I For me, this is just one of the biggest thrills of my life. And I really appreciate you making the time to, to meet me and to do this and to share with me what you do for fun. Thank so. you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both, Dr. Gladys West and her daughter, Carolyn. Well, that concludes our visit with recent Hall of Fame inductee Gladys West and her daughter, Carolyn. Many thanks to them both for sharing part of their morning with us. And many thanks to our corporate partners, Northrop Grumman, Echo Star Hughes, Access Intelligence, and the law firm of k &L Gates. We thank them for sharing their money and support for the Better Satellite World podcast. Well, join us next time when I check in on a former Promise recipient who founded one of the premier startups in the industry and has recently opened a new brewery in upstate New York. We'll also talk with the head of our Luxembourg chapter to see how the Europeans do summer. And also later on with Hall of Fame legend, the man who developed the hotline between Moscow and Washington long ago, and we'll sneak up on his happy hour. So that should be a good time. You can learn more about this and other better Satellite World series and how you can use them to reach a wide audience cheaply by contacting Tamara Bond-Williams. And don't forget to send in your nomination for our Better Satellite World Awards. The deadline for nominations is September 14th. Congratulations to SSPI's Women in Space Engagement Group, which announced its 14 new officers. If you're a woman and interested in being a part of SSPI Wise, visit sspi.org. And follow us on Twitter at SSPI, and check us out on LinkedIn and Facebook. For Space and Satellite Professionals International and our producer, Ana Gomez, I'm Lou Zaccarella. Let's make it a better satellite world. Take care, everybody. Have a good summer.